Early Middle Eastern and Northeast African Civilizations Charlotte Miller Chronology Ancient Mesopotamia 10,000 BC Beginnings of the Agricultural Revolution 3500 BC Appearance of Sumerian City-States in Lower Mesopotamia 3200 BC Early Use of Cuneiform 2900 BC Production of Bronze 2334-2100 BC Akkadian BC Gilgamesh first recorded in cuneiform 1792-1595 BC Babylonian Empire 1792-1750 BC Reign of Hammurabi 900-612 BC Assyrian Empire 626-539 BC New Babylonian Empire 605-562 BC Reign of Nebuchadnezzar Ancient Israel 1300 1200 BC Israelites leave Egypt, following Moses. 1050 to 1010 BC Israelites establish a kingdom. 1000 to 970 BC reign of King David. 979 to 930 BC reign of King Solomon. 931 BC Israel divides into two kingdoms. 586 to 539 BC Babylonian captivity of Israelites. Northeast Africa, Egypt, and Nubia. 7000 BC beginnings of agricultural revolution in Northeast Africa. 600 to 3500 BC desiccation of the Sahara Desert pushed people towards Nile River Valley. 4000 BC towns and villages grew along the Nile River. 3100 BC unification of Egypt. 3100 to 2600 BC Egyptian Archaic Period. 2660 to 2160 BC Egyptian Old Kingdom. 2400 to 1450 BC The Kingdom of Kerma. 2040 to 1640 BC Egyptian Middle Kingdom. 1640 to 1570 BC Egypt's Second Intermediate Period, Egypt under Hyksos rule. 1530 to 1070 BC Egyptian New Kingdom 1350. 1325 BC Amarna period, under Pharaoh Akhenaten, 1040, 332 BC Egyptian late 750 to 656 BC the Kingdom of Kush ruled Egypt, creating the Ethiopian dynasty. 750 to 593 BC Kingdom of Kush, with capital at Napata. 656 to 639 BC Assyrians occupied Egypt. 593 BC Egyptian army sacked Napata, the capital of Kush. 593 BC The Kingdom of Kerma moved its capital to Mero. 525 BC Persian conquest of Egypt. 323 BC Alexander the Great conquered Egypt slash Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt. 30 BC Roman conquest of Egypt. Introduction Defining Civilization the term civilization often elicits mostly idealized images of ancient empires, monumental architecture, and the luxurious lives of ruling classes. Civilization, however, is a tricky term. In the United States, students of history studied Western civilization almost exclusively through the 1950s. In their studies, civilizations were advanced societies with urban centers rooted in European or Middle Eastern culture. America's origins in these Western civilizations was used to explain our own high level of development. However, more recent scholars have definitely broadened the geographical focus by recognizing that worldwide from 3500 to 1000 BC at least, seven independent civilizations emerged in different regions. These recent scholars also continue to debate the definition of civilization and the current compromise amongst world historians is to recognize characteristics that civilizations tended to share. Common characteristics of civilizations included food surpluses, higher population densities, social stratification, systems of taxation, labor specialization, regular trade, and accumulated learning or knowledge passed down from generation to generation. The list here is not all inclusive by any means but it indicates the complexity of the societies that scholars have labeled civilizations. In addition to heated debates about its exact definition, 
civilization is a loaded term, meaning that it can contain a value judgment. If we use the term carelessly, it seems to indicate that some societies are deemed civilized and worthy of inclusion, while others are uncivilized and thus not worth our study. In part, our sensitivity to this issue is a response to the tendency of past. Historians, including many of those working in Europe in the 1800s, to assume that there was a natural progression from an uncivilized state to civilization. These historians viewed people who had values, ways of living, and religious beliefs different than theirs as uncivilized. They further believed that these allegedly uncivilized peoples were behind or needed to catch up with those who were civilized. Today, world historians try to appreciate the great diversity of human experiences and consciously remove these sorts of value judgments. World historians avoid assumptions that some societies in the past were better or further along than others. Therefore, many world historians remain wary of the uncritical use of the term civilization. For our purposes, let us leave aside any value judgments. Societies labeled as civilizations were not inherently better than any others. In fact, as we will see, civilizations demonstrated various vulnerabilities. Considering things like war, slavery, and the spread of diseases there were sometimes advantages to living outside the nexus of civilizations. For example, in comparing societies, scholars have found that in many instances people residing in decentralized states were healthier and lived longer than did their counterparts in early civilizations. However, people Living in societies with social stratification, labor specialization, and trade usually left more written records and archaeological evidence, which historians can analyze to narrate our past. The available resources mean that civilizations tend to be better represented in the written historical records. As you read about past civilizations, keep in mind that historians are currently enhancing our understanding of societies that perhaps remained mobile rejected hierarchies, or preserved their histories orally. These societies were also part of our shared past, even if they are harder to study or have received less scholarly attention. This chapter focuses on early civilizations in the Fertile Crescent and North This chapter focuses on early civilizations in the Fertile Crescent and Northeast Africa. The civilizations in these regions left written records. They also all initially had economies based on farming and developed alongside rivers. Their locations alongside rivers allowed populations in the Fertile Crescent and Northeast Africa to grow the surplus food that they used to support. Urbanization, social stratification, labor specialization, and trade. 